Hi everyone. Um, in our previous class, we discussed about the impact of the LUA in British Honduras. One of the things to note is that um, we were calibrating the impact of Antonio Soberanes and the unionist movement in British Honduras. Um, it is important to note that one of the major impacts of what they did was basically to ignite that sentiment of nationalism or at least a bit of patriotism in British Honduras whereby the workers, the unemployed, the people that were fighting for their rights started to take a look at the government system and the political system and say hey why don't we create our own nation or why don't we have our own representation instead of being a colony of England and that in a way was what prompted or what um, inaugurated the 1950s where you have the nationalist movement coming about in the late 1940s to the People's Committee and then you eventually see that there is a longing to become independent or to have an independent Belize. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, in a way, we're going to be connecting what the labor movements and the unions did to the nationalist movement in British Honduras. We're going to be looking at two different things. One, we're going to describe the origins of the nationalist movement. And two, we're going to outline the reasons for the starting of the People's Committee. Again, we're talking about the People's Committee, which was um, the prelude to the People's United Party, and we're talking about in conjunction with the People's Committee, the Nationalist Movement, which was also to an extent um, composed by people that became members of the, of the People's United Party later on. But to start off, um, we're talking about the context of the 1940s. We have already discussed what were the impacts of the Great Depression. We are now in British Honduras feeling the impacts of World War II, which um, to an extent created a lot of um, instability in Central America. You see people, widespread unemployment. Although in the 1950s, people are starting to get back to employment, the economy is starting to um, get better. But what the, the, the World War II had created was that it had created an idea of um, independence. And this is where you have Jamaica getting its, its self-government in the 1950s and 1940s, 50s. And at this point, it sort of ignites the idea that, look, Caribbean countries or, or countries that were previously um, colonies of England could become independent and gear or govern themselves. In addition to that, Central America was also going through a transformation. In the 1950s and in the 1960s, Central America was going through an upheaval whereby the poor classes were fighting more and more to have representation and also to have a transformation as it relates to their political system. They wanted the dictators to be out of the out of the picture and wanted democracies to come about. So these were the two things that were happening in the region. And of course, the regional things begin to impact British Honduras. So at this point in the 1940s, even while the war is going on, you have a group of educated people from British Honduras. These were all educated men and Coincidentally, they all attended SJC, so they all attended St. John's College. And you have people, for instance, such as John Smith, Lee Richardson, Herman Jex, Philip Goulson, and Nicholas Pollard. So these people, to an extent, were becoming politically active. So they had, a, they had an awakening. They had some sort of um, consciousness building, and they began to seek office, not only for themselves, but to fight for the rights of the people. So they wanted the poor people, the people that were ignored, to be included and represented in government. So they ran for town board elections, and in 1941, they won two seats. So you see that SJC graduates, to an extent, are the ones who are starting to funnel an idea of, look, we need to fight for some sort of representation. Not only representation, but we, need, we also need to start fighting for independence from England. And in the 1940s, things didn't get better. Um, of course, we could even link it to the, to the, to the effects of World War II, in, which ended in 1944. And um, what is important to note about this is that many of the crops were ruined. Um, there was an economic decline. There was an imbalance as it relates to exports and imports. And as a result of that, the governor was already stating, look, um, we need to devalue the dollar. And one of the reasons for that was so that they could make some sort of a balance between the export and and um, import imbalance that was there. The governor went to the legislative assembly, the legislative assembly which was made up of people that um, represented the, the wider community, voted against it. But the governor had the power to overrule whatever the legislative had stated. <clears throat> As a result of that, the governor 
decided to single-handedly devalue the money. So the devalue, which eventually links to the, the decrease in value of the dollar, was done. And this prompted, you could imagine, this prompted um, panic within British Honduras. But not only panic, but it also destabilized not only the economy, but also destabilized the lives of the people. And obviously, you see that the wages begin to fall. People begin to lose buying power. People begin to suffer because they cannot buy the basic stuff that they did with the payment that they received before. The prices of imports begin to rise drastically. As a result of that, people begin to suffer. So you have hunger coming back, which occurred in the 1930s and 40s. Hunger is coming back. Widespread unemployment is starting to come back. However, the direct effect of the devaluation was the fact that people began to develop that consciousness. So the SDSC graduates, to an extent, use this devaluation as a perfect reason to say, look, we cannot stand another year with a governor that can make his decision on his own on our behalf. We have to have more representation and we have to have a sense of making our own decisions for our own. As a result of that, what you see is that in 1949, the and the 1950s, the People's Committee begins to be organized. You have people like um, George Price, um, Lee Richardson, and all of these guys coming together around a, a, a mythical round table and discussing issues that are relating to national issues and patriotic issues. But more importantly, they're starting to think about fighting for the independence of Belize. So, of course, there is a sentiment of nationalism where they begin to say we are Belize and we are supposed to be fighting for Belize, or British Honduras in this case, right? So the People's Committee came into play and it was fighting for political unity and it was not only fighting for political unity but it was also fighting for issues that relate to people in British Honduras. For instance, one of the major things that George Price fought against was the idea of federation. So the British wanted to create a federation of all Central American nations, uh, all, all Central, not Central American, sorry, all Caribbean colonies whereby they would have a central government. And um, George Price did not agree with that. And that was one of the main things that he spoke against in his rhetoric. But what you see here is that thousands flocked to meetings and demonstrations. And this is where you see the General Workers' Union, which was, for, which was um, created in 1940s by Antonio Soberanis as well, joined and gave this movement, the People's Committee, which started as a political movement, a lot more force. So they had a lot more social support now. And that is what, to an extent, pushed them further. So this brings us to the end of our class for today. Um, again, what I want you to think about is what was happening in the minds of all of these people to fight for their independence. Um, I wanted to complete this particular cause and effect chart, look at the effects of um, World War II and British Honduras. And the effects are simply that um, it caused a, a, a economic turmoil, it caused uh, an imbalance between exports and imports, and to an extent it caused the devaluation itself. So I wanted to define what's a devaluation, describe the process of how it was done by the governor, um, looking at how it was discussed in the in the, um, the legislative assembly, and he still went and overruled them, um, what the demonstrations were all about, which was about real wages, and then the meeting, again the persons that were there, what is nationalism, and um, what was created, what was about it. Thank you.